Well, we've been asking these questions and uh, the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthian church or the Holy Spirit is talking to the church. And uh, over the last few weeks, uh, what we've been able to say is uh, that we're not meant to be uninformed or not meant to be ignorant on this issue called the spiritual gifts. If you were here in the first week and if you haven't been able to be a part of these messages, you can go back and uh, podcast them or go back on our website and watch them. We said, the, the scripture says, don't be uninformed, don't be ignorant to what these spiritual gifts are and what they mean. And not only that, that was in week one, week two, we said, because the point of these is the radical love of the Father for us, meaning they're, they're getting poured out all over the church in order to express the heart of love of God. The gifts don't exist for the gifts themselves. They do not exist so that we can say we're gifted. They exist supremely to express the loving heart of the Father to the church and to a broken world. And then we got to say, listen, it's important for us because of this, because this is why God has this, to not limit what God will do to say, nope, you don't get to give me that gift, God, or I don't want this, or don't do that in my life. Like, if you want to blow that person up with that gift, great, but not me. That's a dangerous place to be, period, in a walk with the Lord, the king of the universe who knows better for you than you have for, than you could know or have for yourself. So we said it's important to open our hands up and say, God, whatever you want to do, Whatever. We, that's a posture. We, we talk about this actually all the time here. Hands up is what we say. God, whatever you want to do in my life, however you want to lead, however you want to gift me, however you want to change me, I'm saying yes to that. And we have this instruction from the apostle Paul through the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we'll just read it again. It says, pursue love. Pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Earnestly desire these spiritual gifts that are being poured out. What does it mean to earnestly desire? We got to talk a little bit last week, but I I was reminded of uh, uh, when we have uh, family movie night at our house, uh, nobody can agree on what we're going to watch ever, ever. And so I have a, a pretty standard, you can ask my, my kid, I have a pretty standard if we, we can't agree on what we're going to watch. Uh, I always say, there's an amazing movie called Rudy we need to watch. It's amazing. Now, I recognize now I was looking, uh, it came out 30 years ago, which is like, let that just punch you in your face for a moment. For those of us that were there, for those of you born after 1993, by the grace of God, you've already seen it because God loves you and somehow you've seen it. But this movie is so inspiring to me. It's about a young uh, man who uh, is not smart, not big, not athletic, and he has this zeal and passion for Notre Dame football. All right. And we'll we'll give him a pass on that. I'm not into Notre Dame football, but all right. Jesus does things with everybody. All right. So... He's got a passion for Notre Dame football. There is absolutely, one, no way he could ever get into this university, and two, there's no way he has the physical talent and ability to play with one of the greatest programs in the country. And yet, this movie is his absolute desire to see himself run out of the tunnel so that his whole family can see him. And candidly, I can't talk about it very long because I'll cry. Because this movie will mess you up. In fact, if you can't, if you don't cry when you watch this movie, I don't know if you're human. So so that's where I'm at on this thing. (laughs) I absolutely love it because what you see is someone who has such a zeal and such a passion to accomplish something. And I just... I just for a moment think, well, I think that's a, it's such an inspiring and great thing. If you haven't seen the movie, I encourage you to watch it. But I, I kind of get a sense that when the Apostle Paul is looking at the church, he's saying, hey, pursue love and desire these gifts so that this body, this church, gets built up, this church gets moved forward by this, these common, these graces that God is pouring out so that 
we can magnify him. And that's what I want to just look at for a moment these, this morning. I've been talking all the way uh, over these last few weeks about the, the right heart, the right mind, the right attitude, but we've never actually got to talk about, well, what are these gifts? What are they? What are these graces that God's pouring out? So we're just going to read a few of these texts. There's five kind of primary, not only, but five primary texts. And I think one of the great things we can do when we gather together is just read the Bible. So I'm just going to read these texts and we'll get just a a moment to unpack what these are. 1 Corinthians, if you're in 1 Corinthians, you can just go go back a couple of chapters to chapter 12. And we'll start in verse 4 and then we're going to jump around from there. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, thank God. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Say everyone. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given a Spirit Uh, 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 through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another, working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. That's what makes it amazing. This isn't about us. This is about a king looking to touch the world and he's just looking for people with hands up to receive whatever. Doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter how many. Doesn't matter when. Doesn't matter how, God. But as you will. God, man, what a great heart to have here. As you will. Love it. You can jump down a few verses. Verse 27, here's another expression or listing of these gifts. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God is appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then, uh, uh, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Uh, Rhetorically, no. But earnestly desire higher gifts. And I'll show you still more an excellent way. The more excellent way is loving people. Meaning you get these gifts, but you don't love people. It's empty. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. Now, we'll put it on the screen, but if you want to, Romans chapter 12, you can jump over there, see another list of these graces. Romans 12, verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Read that again, so this is seared into your soul. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, uh, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And we can jump to Ephesians 4, and you could debate some debate whether these are gifts or these are offices within the church. If you want to have that fight, let's have that fight. Let's go have coffee. We'll throw coffee at each other. Whatever we need to do, let's go have the talk. But I love what's happening here. Verse, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 says, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So he's speaking of graces that are given as a gift from Christ to the church. Jump down to 11, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. For building up the body of Christ. For building up the body of Christ. 
And then our last one, if you want to flip there, we'll have it on the screen, but if you want to flip there, 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. What an amazing phrase. Varied grace, meaning These incredible, unique, and distinct, beautiful expressions of the grace of God. How amazing is this? These gifts are expressions of the grace of the Father. Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Come on. Meaning, let's let's shut the book on this. These gifts are being given to the church so that God receives glory forever. So that God is glorified and magnified in us and through us. And that is why God has poured these graces out on us. And so this is a, these are five, there's other gifts that are communicated about. But by, at this point, I hope at the very least you're asking, like, I wonder what, I wonder what my gifts are. I don't know if you've got to that point where you're like, what am I gifted with? In fact, if I, if I were to take a straw poll, I won't do it here, but I don't know that any, I don't know how many would say, oh, I know, be, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what my spiritual gifts are, what God's been pouring out on me. And so, one, if you're asking that question, a great resource, not the only resource, a great resource out there is to go to this website, giftstest.com. Just giving that to you as a resource. If you're interested in like, I'm not even sure where I land on this thing, this is a great one. This is a great place to go. It's not the only one. There's all kinds you can go to. Just wanted to give that to you. But what I want to do here is I'm, gonna, I'm like going to blitz through these gifts that are described here. We're going to go very fast. We don't have time. I wish we had time for all of the things to get into all of these. In fact, I, my hope is that your appetite is kind of whetted and that you're desiring to know more about what these gifts are. But here are the gifts that are expressed through these scriptures. I want to go through them very quickly and then we're going to just ask what God wants to do. Administration, it's the divine ability to organize multiple tasks, so groups of people to accomplish these tasks. This is a supernatural gift if you don't have this in your body, which I don't. Apostleship, divine ability to pioneer churches, ministries, planting, overseeing, training, discernment, divine ability to spiritually identify falsehood, to distinguish between right and wrong and motives and spiritual forces that are at work in situations. Evangelism, divine ability to help non-Christians or those far from God take necessary steps to come into this family. Exhortation, divine ability to strengthen and comfort and urge others to action through the written or spoken word and biblical truth. Faith, divine ability to believe God for unseen supernatural results in every arena of life. Giving or or generosity, divine ability to produce wealth and to give by tithes and offerings for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God on the earth. Healing, divine ability to act as an intermediary in faith by prayer and by laying on of hands for the healing of physical, mental, spiritual sickness. Helps, divine ability to work in a supportive role for the accomplishment of tasks in Christian ministry with the ability to often see the need before others do. Intercession, divine ability to stand in the gap in prayer for someone, something, or someplace, believing for profound results. Word of knowledge, the divine ability to bring truth to a situation by supernatural revelation. It's often accompanied by just an encouragement or heart from the word, the word of God. Leadership, a divine ability to influence people at their level while directing and focusing them on the big picture vision or idea. Mercy, divine ability to, and to feel empathy and to care for those who are hurting 
in a unique way. Miracles, divine ability to alter natural outcomes of life in a supernatural way through prayer, faith, and divine direction, shepherding, divine ability to care for the personal needs of others by nurturing and mending life issues, prophecy, divine ability to communicate God's truth and heart in a way that calls people to right relationship with him, service, divine ability to do small or great tasks in working for the overall good of the body, teaching, divine ability to bring understanding and depth from the word of God to other believers, tongues, divine ability to pray in either a foreign or a heavenly language to encourage your spirit to commune with God. The gift of tongues is meant to be accompanied and interpreted when it's corporate, when there's a corporate gathering for the edification of the body. Word of wisdom. Finally, the divine ability to understand and to bring clarity to situations and circumstances often through applying the truths of scripture in a practical way. Now, that's a blitz. I wish we could get into, because I I just created 42 questions already this morning in your minds about these things. I wish we had a moment for it. We don't have all the time for it. My aim is to to take the fire poker and just say, hey, what is God wanting to stoke in you? And to ask that question, what are the things that God has been pouring out on you? It's entirely possible you're good with about half of that list. And then there's about half of that list you're like, I don't know, pastor. And I would love to explore that with you. We'll go there. But the aim is to ask God to pour these things out over us. Now, about this list, just for clarity. I think it's about in in all of those scriptures that we just read, those five texts that we read, none of the lists of the gifts are complete Just for clarity, none of them are complete. None of the gifts are mentioned uh, in every list. None of the gifts are listed in every list. Uh, None of the gifts are mentioned in every list. No two lists are exactly alike. And some of the gifts that are mentioned are mentioned more more than once. So this is what's unique about this. What God's not trying to do is put a box out here and so that you and I can try to figure out how to fit ourselves into a box. He's got... His spirit inviting us into open hands to go, okay, this is how this is going to be. It's going to be actually a little bit messy, and it's actually going to require a step of faith to believe God loves you and wants to move in you and through you. Do you believe it? That's, that's why, that's the point of these. There's all kinds of other expressions of gifts that aren't in these lists. Uh, there's one that's uh, hospitality is out there. That's, a, that's one of the other gifts. Martyrdom, which is everyone's favorite gift to be given, they're looking for, right? Um, is one of those, it's, it's called a grace or expressions given from God. Uh, singleness or celibacy, which might be worse than martyrdom to some of you. It's possible if you're single and you're just going, Lord, get thee behind me. You know, you're like, don't, I don't need that in my life. There's different, there's all, listen, we couldn't begin to get, hear this, couldn't begin to get to the end of the giftedness of the spirit of God. It's not about the list I read that list off because found it on giftstest.com, all right? But that's not the end-all, be-all. The point is to say, oh my gosh, all throughout the Word of God, God is taking really messy, broken, insignificant people and turning the world upside down through them. Man, This is unbelievable. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to be a follower of Jesus to get more identity, more design, more purpose, more life, more power, more truth. I I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to other than you're just simply afraid. And God's saying, don't be afraid. Come, be used by me. The point of these is to recognize God is pouring these gifts out on us to use them. And I think it's important for us to be asking those questions. I, I went through that list so fast, so you'd just be like, oh, I gotta, I gotta look that back up later. I gotta discover what God has for me. 
And the, it, what's powerful is he answers through those five texts that we just read. He answers with crystal clarity exactly why he's given these to us. And he says, number one, because I want my body, my bride, my people built up. I want them encouraged and nurtured and built up and challenged and moving forward. I want them to experience that. But there is one superseding that goes above them all. And that is God will get glory in this life. God will get glory. There's not one healing that has ever happened that is about the cool charismatic healer ever on the stage. It is about the king who is the healer. There is not one expression of administration that is about, oh my gosh, you're so amazing and organized. Amen. Glory to God in that. You are organized by the glory of God. For the glory of God. I don't care the teaching gifts, the ones we feel cool with, the tongues, the ones we're like, I don't know about. Every one of these exists to bring glory to God. We're going to build each other up and then we're going to see God magnified. That's the end game. That's the end game. First Peter actually says, hey, I'm giving you all these, use these gifts in order that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him, to him belong glory and dominion forever. Now, here's the cool thing. And this is what we get to see all throughout Scripture. When we do these two things, when we make these gifts and we make our, even our lives about the opportunity to serve and to build others up and to bring glory to God, meaning very naturally to take our eyes off of ourselves and to look to, to the God of the universe and to look to building others up. Whenever we do that, in our lives, we begin to be transformed. We're the ones that actually experience growth and life and goodness and glory in our lives when we look not to ourselves but to build others up and to see God glorified. It does something in us. If the gifts were never about us, and they were about being able to do what God wants to do, which is change and transform us into his image. For you and I to be more changed and more transformed into his image, that's what these things are actually about. When we build up others and we do things unto the glory of God, it changes us. It changes us. It's one of the craziest, most beautiful things that we see all throughout the word of God. How alive... How meaningful is it if God is initiating and growing and breathing and pouring out these gifts upon us? How, me how meaningful is it, hear this, how meaningful is it if God is initiating something with you to pour something out on you, to breathe out to his spirit, to build something up, to give himself away to this broken world and to his church? How meaningful is that? But listen, how meaningless is that if God is doing that with you, initiating, pouring out, breathing on you, and for us not to use it. Man, that hurt, that hurt stings me a little bit. Even as I'm getting ready for this, I'm like feeling the sting. Like I don't want to be receiving and being given gifts, and I'm saying, no, I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to employ them. Uh, anybody ever had a a wet sponge sit in the sink for too long? You all have. What happens with a wet sponge that sits in the sink too long? Oh, my heavens. It stinks. It's bad. And then somebody has to take the job of wringing it out, and that, sk that stank is on your hand, right? Then you're like, what am I going to do about this? But somebody's got to do it, okay? 
All right, sponges that get poured into that don't get poured out, they start to feel the rot that comes from this God who is breathing out beauty and life. And, and to not be used is to miss out, is to, if you will, decay. Part of our growth and development into the, pre, into the nature of Christ is to be used this way he lived on this earth. He meant for it, for his followers. He looked them in the eyes and said, you're going to do greater works than I. You're going to do greater things. Which is not to say that all of us have to walk around trying to get Lazarus to come out of the grave. Which is to say there are important, powerful things you and I were meant to be a part of by his grace and by his spirit. And not on our own flesh. Not of our own doing. And I feel the weight of that even as I stand up here 40 some odd times a year to teach and communicate because I think the easiest thing in the world to do is to teach from a place of flesh. And it's empty. And not to be asking, Spirit of God, move. Spirit of God, grow me. Spirit of God, deliver a message. This is a partnership that God has called us into. We don't want to be dormant. Part of our growth, part of our development as followers of Jesus is to not be stunted in this growth because we're not willing to just take a step and say, God, gift me. Release your gifts in me and through me. Help me use them to build this body up. I want you to look around. Look around. This is an amazing group. Everybody look around. You got to have to actually move your head. It's awkward. I know. If you slept funny on, on, on the pillow, that's fine. But just move your head around. Look at people. Hey, this is an amazing group of people. Uh, there's not a one of them in here that doesn't need to be built up, me included. I need your gifts. I need the gifts of the Spirit that are in you. We need these with each other. And I'm so grateful for it. The beauty is that the church... It's an amazing place, but is it the only place we get to use these gifts? Heck no, not even close. It may be the primary place we come to see each other built up, but it's not the only place. I have no doubt your gifts are meant to be used in your home and over your spouse and with your children and among in your career and in your, with your coworkers and in the random places that you meet people at the ballpark or Library, or I can't, you can't talk in the library, but you can pray. The, um, the factory, wherever you go, come on. That's, God's there. And everybody in Franklin every day. <laughs> Especially on Saturdays and Sundays. These gifts, guys, these gifts are meant to be used. I, I want to get like, if, I want to be like Rudy a little bit. I want to get excited about what God wants to do in me and through me. And I don't want to hold my arm up at the God of the universe and tell him, no, you can't do that in me. Because it's possible you can be walking along one day and the loving, merciful, kind God is going to come on you to say, I have someone I want to touch through you. That is a very real possibility. In fact, you may have already experienced it and it it, it touched them and it changed you. Come on. This is something we got to be leaning into, right? We are designed to partner with God in this world and what he is doing. We are designed for it, made in his image to carry his grace everywhere we go. Every place you're walking, everything you're doing. And so the question is, we just, we get to ask, are we, are we ready? Are we willing? It's the whole point of doing this together on Sunday, talking about this, is to ask this question. Are we ready and willing? Are we eager to step in? You can ask the question, how, well, how do I know what my gifts are? How do I know what my gifts are? How do I pursue 
love while earnestly desiring these gifts? This is a great question. How do I know what they are? One, go to the test and try. It's not, by the way, the test isn't going to tell you. It's just an, a tool. Do the test. But I, tests aren't perfect. Okay, tests aren't perfect, except for the Kobayashi Maru. There's like two people that got that. That was a Star Trek. That was from Star Trek. That was so nerdy. I'm sorry. Did it, did, are my Star Trek people, did, did y'all get that? Just one, two, two. I ministered to your souls. You two there. Everybody else is like, we, let's pray for our pastor at the end of this time. All right. Uh, I remember a tool, uh, my, old, my old lead pastor back home, everybody's got somebody from back home that poured into them and used a diagram to help answer, begin to answer this question. How are you wired and how are you built? What is it that God's pouring out on you? And I just wanted to help share this, um, I think, tool, again, tool to help us think through. So here's the question. Here's a st- our starting question. Uh, what do you feel like you are good at? What do you feel like you're good at? Why I ask that because a starting place for beginning to just identify some of the giftings or the, the things that God is pouring out of you is the place where you have found unique abilities. And so we have this like little diagram to show you, thinking about where you land on this. What are your abilities? What are the things that you find yourself? You have a unique uh, ability, a unique ability, uh, effectiveness, maybe it's even unusual in ways that are maybe above others. Where do you find yourself? Like, this is something that I really have and really carry. And I think maybe this is an area that God has poured into my life. The spiritual gifts assessment, uh, yeah, that website that I referred to, um, you can take as an online tool just to, to begin to ask those. It helps mine for some of those questions about what you feel gifted you know, what you feel like you have ability in. The next question we get to ask is, where do I hear affirmation from trustworthy people that are around me? Where do I hear, excuse me, uh, affirmation? Meaning, if we'll listen to others, you hear from other people, man, you just really seem to have this and it, it's awesome or this is a blessing to me or something I love about you or they're affirming of you because the truth is sometimes we can wish for a gift or we can desire for a gift and try to trick ourselves into thinking that maybe we actually have it. What's helpful is trustworthy friends who can say, no, nah, yeah, you know, like they can give us a little bit of both, right? Trustworthy friends are helpful. And saying, hey, here's where I really see you're gifted. And so asking that question, I, I'm, in fact, I can't think of a better lunch topic. I'm just throwing this out there. You don't have to do this. To, then, to just say, hey, what do you see is gifted in me? And to be able to share that over each other. Trusted people to be able to go like, hey, how am I wired? Where, where, where do you see that there is something really alive and in me? Where do you feel I'm gifted? And take time just to affirm each other. And then we get to ask this question. What am I really passionate about now? What am I passionate about? Meaning, uh, and you know, you got to use all A's. So affinity, meaning what are you zealous for, right? Do you have a passion for to make a difference? What do you have a zeal for? So you have uh, like a heart for the next generation. Like you feel Bird, you are zealous, passionate about the next generation. Some of you are passionate about those who are so far from God. And you like, you hurt, you feel the weight of it. You're passionate about it. Some of you care about the disadvantaged in some way. Like your heart goes out. You feel a weight for them, want to care for them. Some of you love, love, love to pray for people and cover people in prayer. Some of you are zealous to see God touch hearts or minds, or some of you are passionate about seeing God heal bodies. Some of you are passionate just to make people feel like they're at home. We got 100 people in here. There's 100 different ways that God's pouring his grace. 
And the question is, where do you find yourself with the ability and where do you find yourself being affirmed by others and where do you find yourself being really passionate? Right there at the center of that, you're going to find very likely something that God is meaning to pour out over you to touch the lives of others. I'm so grateful for all the amazing gifts. I'm so grateful for the incredible ways they get lived out here in our church and certainly far from here. But let's begin to ask that question. Okay, Lord, how do I begin to step in to do that? I'll be, the truth is our church family is continuing to grow. Whatever gifts you got, we need them. We need them. We need your life flowing through here. I want to encourage you. If you haven't had a chance, there's a few things you can do. If you're not involved in the life of this body, then grab that connect card in the chair back and just put your name down and click and click. Check. You can click it. It it will be awkward, but you can click. (laughs) Check. And just say, hey, uh, help me find a place on serve team. Nobody can sign your life away forever. You can do that. You can go to the welcome table. We actually have sheets on the welcome table of the different teams you could be a part of here. Or you can literally just go, you actually grab the connect card, you can flip it over, click uh, church life, family life, one of those, uh, uh, that uh, QR code, or you can go to our website and click on um, get involved. And right there is a place to find out where you can dive into the life here. That's one way, but is it, will this be the only expression? Absolutely not. But the point is to say, God, I'm not going to be stag- a stagnant sponge. I want to be used. I just want to be used. And that's what we're asking God to do. You guys pray with me. Let's ask God to do that. We're just going to finish. We've got a few minutes left. We're going to worship. Lord, our heart is to come to you and to tell you whatever you want to do in us and whatever you want to do through us, make it alive. Whatever you want to do, would you tell the Lord that? Lord, whatever you want to do, however you want to use me to build up this body and to touch our city, to see our friends who are far from you, perfect strangers, closest friends, God, let these gifts be alive. Lord, we're asking. Our hands are open. Would you pour out your gifts on us? Would you let us step into more of what you have for us? We recognize, God, as we look to serve and bless others, and we recognize, God, that as we look to live for your glory and not our own, not for our own name's sake, not for our own giftedness sake, but for your glory, that's where life is. That's where we're transformed. That's where we become more like you. Our journey of growth, God, thank you. Help me, God. Just pray. Would you pray that? Help me serve you. Receive your spirit. Pour out on me that I might glorify you. That's our that's our prayer. Thank you, God. Our heart's ready to receive, Lord. Surrender to you whatever you want to do. We surrender to you whatever you want to do. Use us, we ask. In Jesus' name.